Am I here? <laughs> Remember, I don't know what I'm doing here. So somebody tell me if you can hear me and see me. Gina is here. Please tell me you can hear and see me. Please, please, please. Okay. Please tell me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this is... We have never, oh, yes, thank you. We, um, we have gone live before, but it was on a different program, and it really doesn't matter, but we're just trying this out, out hoping that this works. I'm nervous, because this is not, um, not my jam. So uh, anyway, wonderful, I'm so glad you're here. So today, I, we aren't creating today, we're chatting today, because I need to ease my way into this. I have been, my brother has set me up to be ready for live, doing lives maybe four years ago, I'd say, and I just haven't done it. And Kathy has been encouraging me a lot along the way. Uh, and then when I had my shoulder surgery, she was like big on stepping up and trying to help. She's like, what can I do? Can we do some lives together? Can I do a video for you? And she has been very patient with me trying to work through this. And I decided it would be best to start with a daytime because if I don't usually like to work down here at night, so daytime it is. Um, so she is joining me and I thank Kathy because she has really been the, uh, the person who has really helped offered to help a lot and been very supportive. So here we are, let's bring in Kathy. Hello. <gasps> Yay. Hello. I'm, I showed up. You're here. I'm I didn't here. chase your way. Well, oh. and what's really great, uh, Jen, is I can see all the comments coming through on this end of the software. So I oh, see good. all people popping in and. Good, good. So that's good too. Look at us, look at us. I'm so nervous. You are, you know what, here's the thing. Okay, I know the nervous thing, because like I used to get the whole flop sweat, you know, like boob sweat and back sweat, just horrible, just horrible. But the more you do it, the less it gets weird. And so for anyone out there watching, you know, you think, oh, these, these people are naturals. No, we have to work really hard to seem natural. Yeah, and this was like, it's a it's a setup to get ready. It's not like oh, you yeah. can work before it, then come on live and then go work after it. It's like a it's a production. I'm and I've got somebody helping me, so I don't know how you do it because I don't. Well, <laughs> that's why I sweat so much. But it really is because, like you know, when you when you have a live set up at noon, you get nothing done leading no. up to it. I mean, I'm sure some people do. Like I'm sure Gina K goes through the warehouse, does all her work, and then she shows up and she's magic. For me, I'm, I'm like thinking, how am I gonna mess this up? How am I gonna mess this up? And well, I can't start this, cause I gotta get, you know. So it is funny how you put so much stress into it. I don't know, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's Gina, funny. Gina Gina is a unicorn. I mean, Gina, nobody does lives like her. I mean, no. I, I'll, I'll, I, yeah, no. She's well, just a pro at it. Experience. She is, and the other thing about Gina is, um, you know, when I when I finally came over to your card side, um, which was back in 2017, I watched a ton of your videos because I'm like, oh, well, Jen's been doing this for a while. It's like, well, I had no idea that you had like thousands of videos. But Gina, too, um, even before back in the old days, she would film herself live yep. crafting and then she would release it, edit it down. And I basically modeled what I do now after that, because it's just. You know, for me, it's easier to not add a voiceover later. Yeah. But again, I have no little kids in the background asking for things, you know. Um, it makes a difference. So It does. But, so, you know, yeah. I'm glad you're here. See, I do too much in a video that I can't go live or I would be live, like, for eight hours. So I have to do a voiceover because I film so much. And I got to edit it down and then voiceover. So... I, you know, it. I wouldn't call what I do the best method, but I, it's no, what I do. It is true, Jen, because you do multiple cards. Yeah. I typically do one, and so it makes it easier. I actually just saw a question from uh, someone, Pam McClung. Oh, my, vo my volume needs to be higher. Huh, am I not talking loud enough? 
Mike, um, can you adjust Mike, me a little bit? Can you bit? put her voice up higher? Um, We're going to try. It's funny. Okay, so Pam McClung asking, how are you guys about teaching live events? Is it easier or worse? Oh, and for me, me I, teaching a person, I'm all good. Well, yeah, and I think teaching online, I'm golden. Um, I wasn't the first few times, you know, because I was nervous that my technology would fail. That's the main thing. If you're in person, yeah. the only thing that can fail is you. You can pass out, <laughs> right? But like... But I don't, teaching is not um, as scary to me. But I think too, Jen, we've been teaching online, both of us separately for years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jennifer's been teaching with online card classes since they launched that. Um, I used to teach scrapbook classes that were yep. online. They weren't live though. Um, so yeah. the whole live thing, it, it's it's different because you can mess up. Yeah. Well, I you know. I, we had many times Kathy and I have said, okay, let's go live Tuesday night. Okay, let's go live Thursday night. And I kept finding reasons to not do it. And I finally excuses. realized, excuses, my brother said excuses. But I finally realized it was because I would have it in my mind all day. And then, yeah. you know, the kids come home and I'd have to go do it. So finally I said, you know what? I know it's not best for everyone, but I'm going to start with daytime. So thus, why we're here at daytime. Yeah. So I, well, you know, I, hopefully people can watch it after. So, well, and that is true. And I, I do, I do lives once a week, but I do most of them at noon. And then I do one in the evening. And the thing is the ones in the evening are a blast. More people can watch. And I love that, but I am not as effective in the evening because yeah. I'm not a night worker. I am like, if you got me up at four and let me go live at six, You'd get the best live stream of your life. I just am more functional during the middle of the day. So, um, and that's just what it is. I like, I watch Gina at night and when I'm watching her, I'm in bed. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? Like I have the covers, I've got my iPad. I, I, there's no way I'd be working. So, so I feel and that, that. And I, I do, I think it's nice to, you know, know what works for you. Yeah. So yeah. that's why we're here. And we decided to not craft for this first time because again, I gotta get more used to this. Um, yeah, yeah. And then next time. But I think we figured out how to do overhead cameras and still be in, so we will be ready for next time. But I yeah. also, I had my shoulder surgery. I was doing a bit better for a while, but then um, I got an infection. So this week hasn't been as great and that, Kathy's like, let's do something. Let's do something here. So um, I'm hoping to get back to really crafting soon. But man, the shoulder getting old. Ooh. It's a thing. And, you know, I, I <laughs> like when you first showed up and had to get your ice pack on, I'm like, where's your where's your pack? You've got to get that on. Yeah. It's a bummer because we use, you know, for you to be this. And I know you've taught. You taught what last weekend or the week? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to take it easy. You have to take it yeah, easy. Yeah. I just, because... I'm just careful. The big thing I can't do is reach or like lift my arm up, but my body doesn't want to do that. It's like, so yeah. it stops me. So it's okay. Yeah. I, all is good. But I thought, uh, well, somebody asked what I just saw, why did I have surgery in the first place? I had oh, rotator yeah. cuff surgery and it was because I had a bone that was rubbing. And so it was just a genetic thing. And I was using it more, not just for work, but I was doing Pilates and other things and it just wore. Kind of like you wear it through your jeans, basically the same thing happened to my shoulder. So it's fine. It's, uh, it's, it's went better than I could have dreamed. It's just, you gotta deal with it. You gotta deal yeah. with it. Um, that, this is t turning into, my bursitis is killing me. I had a... <laughs> I had a foot surgery many, many years ago, same kind of deal. It was like, it was a congenital sort of weird thing. And I'm like, had the surgery. What no one told me, least of all the surgeon, oh, you won't drive for eight weeks. Nobody, nobody mentioned that to me. And I'm like, as soon as I saw what they did to my foot, I'm like, I can't leave the house. It yeah. was awful. Luckily, I don't craft with my feet. And back then I was not making cards, but irregardless, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's it always takes something. You out of commission. It's always something. It is. It's always something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And so, okay. We need to talk about, because we go way back. 
Oh, some my people gosh. may have heard this, but I don't know that everybody has. And it's it's kind of it's kind of uh, I don't know meant to be that we're here today. Yeah. So I, Kathy, and I both started in the scrapbooking world, and uh, we. Well, you you tell it and show it because you've got all it. All right, all right. I have a little treat for all of you, and I'm going to show this to you now. And the treat is, how do Jennifer and I know each other? Oh, let me zoom in there for you a little bit. The Creating Keepsakes Hall of Fame. Now, if you're not yep. familiar with the Creating Keepsakes Hall of Fame, it was a scrapbooking competition back in the early 2000s. It was a big deal, and Jennifer at the time, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were you were a garden girl back then. Is that correct? I don't know if I was yet. Okay, you were working your way up. All right. Well, here's the thing. Jen and I both scrapbooked, <laughs> and, you know, this is when everybody basically met online, and so we both submitted to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so here's what it is. I'm going to show you. Here she is. First of all, I would like you to look at this beautiful cover. Sometimes sassy, always sweet, eternally you. Guess who designed that cover? You did that, but it's not your kid. <laughs> no, it's not my kid. And I came up with the name Ainsley Ray because I thought yes. that was so cool. I'm embarrassed yep. of myself. But anyway, no. so when you when you open up to page, oh, here we are, page 49. Jennifer Ditz. And Jennifer, yeah. I have known you for so long, I forgot that used to be your last name. Yeah. And is that, is that? That's Kay. She's Kay. like 28 now, you know? She's, She's married. Yeah. So Jennifer was, you know, one of the Hall of Famers. You had to go get a headshot. It was a big deal. And that, I mean, it's so funny to look at this now to see, you know, well, there's the hubby, right? Here's, yeah. look at, Here's here's you and Ken. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Look at you, like your little Audrey Hepburn. Look at your mom. Oh, that's my grandma. You gotta... that's that, your... No, that's my no. That was no. That's my mom. That's my mom. I was gonna say it looks just like your mom today. Yes, it is. Um, that's my mom. But yeah, so Jen oh was the gosh. Hall of Famer. There you are. Audrey. Is that Audrey? Audrey, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a kindergarten then, teacher now. Oh my gosh! And the funny thing is, though, too. I don't think you look much different. <laughs> I don't. And I don't know sure what kind do. of vampire stuff is happening at your house, but I'm like, you don't look much different. Okay. Now, if we go back to, okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Let's see Kathy's. And there, oh, look at him. Look at little that, Coley. Look at Cole. Oh, now he's oh 24. And there I was, you know, doing all my moody, look at that. It's all okay. moody black and whites. <laughs> yeah, but also clean and simple like you, you, you know, yeah. are known for and do so well. Oh, I mean, the, the thing is, bottom. like, I don't, I took this aesthetic into card making. Oh my gosh, look at that. That, oh. see, I, that was my dog bandit and there was my daughter. So anyway, yes. it's just fun to have this and have this connection because, you know, you, to me, you were like this young ingenue. I'm like, who is this girl? She's so, cause, cause I'm only 10 years older than you. But at the time, you know, I was in my thirties, you were in your twenties. Yeah. Yeah. I, I started <sighs> scrapbooking right around when I met my husband and very quickly, like very shortly after quit my job. Yeah. Um, as an engineer and started doing this and I worked for a company named Autumn Leaves and I entered this contest. I was actually at a crop and somebody said, you know, there's a big contest where you can win like $300 with a product. You should enter. And I'm like, what's that? And so I started to look into it and I entered and yeah. that's, and then over the years, uh, Kathy worked with the magazine. I worked with the magazine and we would also both I taught at quite a few CKUs. It was Creating Keepsake yeah. University, which is yep. um, uh, like, it was a convention where they would teach scrapbooking classes. And I would see Kathy there. And uh, yeah, and so we would hang out back in the day and then fast forward many years. And I'm, well, like, you know, my feet are sunk in the card making world. And I'm like, Kathy, come to this, this world. 
come on, you can do it. And she resisted for a while. And then finally, I'm like, you just got to try it because it's just so freeing to not be tied to photos and stories and getting it just right. Like, I feel like yes. um, there's more forgiveness with card making because you're not tying like a specific memory that you want to get just right. I, at right. least that's and what it is for me. I mean, and not only that, because right. remind me to circle back to ask you a question, but I actually see a question from Gina M who says, now that neither of you scrapbook anymore, do you ever print pics or do anything? My answer is no, I don't. And, and I know that I, no, I don't even feel that I should, because here's the thing. I never felt that way as a scrapbooker. I only did it for fun to save memories and stories, but here's what happened to me. My kids grew up, grew up yeah. and their stories are theirs. And so for yeah. public consumption, were I to continue scrapbooking, their stories would have been complete, were yeah. off limits. And I totally respect that. And I've had people say, but what about your story? It's like, I want to say, girl, do you know how many scrapbook pages I have about myself? Yeah. You might look yeah. at some of them and say, are you a narcissist? No, I swear I'm not. But like, I just felt like. I have told a lot of my story in a way that I wanted to, I'm good for now. And so I don't, I don't do anything, nothing. Yeah, I them, don't but... either. I do feel like I should, but I have let that go. I, I just, you can, you can only do so much. And that's yeah. one thing I'm going to have to just and, be okay with and... setting aside. That's what happened. Okay, so but here's the thing though, Jen. You what, what year did you transition to card making? Do you oh, remember? Gosh, I, don't, I don't even know. I got a call from Aaron at Hero Arts, and he said, "Hey, would you be interested in incorporating stamping into scrapbooking and like making a card to match a scrapbook page?" And I'm like, "Okay." I had always heard good things about him, and okay. so. I said, I'll give it a try. And I met Sherry Carroll and she kind of taught me the ropes of card making and it was hook, line and sinker. I was done. I, I rarely, rarely, I think I made like two or three scrapbook pages after that. It, wow. I was just, and I have to say thank you because we've gotten uh, two super chats, one from Miss Brooks and one from Miss <laughs> Boast, Boss, <laughs> Boast, I'm not trying to say that. And thank you. We appreciate super that. Super chats. We love uh, super chats. I will split it with Kathy and we can have a coffee <laughs> online. <laughs> Jen, Jen and I will do this just offline. She'll send me the e-card and we'll just, well, maybe we should have fruit salad. Oh, wine could work too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jennifer and I Who are knows? fans. We're fans. I just, uh, yeah. well, then, uh, okay, somebody did ask about garden girl. Somebody asked what or oh. a couple people. So there used to be a website called two peas in a bucket and it was very popular for scrapbooking and some other crafts and they had a design team and I was on it for a long time. And then Kathy was on it too. Christina Werner was on it. We all were on it for a different amount of time. Two peas in oh. a bucket is gone now. I was never a garden girl. You weren't? No, I was not allowed to be. Oh, because you worked with the magazine? Because I worked for the magazine oh. and the owner said, yeah, no, we can't have you because that would gotcha. make them seem biased. So, but all of my friends were like, yeah. um, Mar my friend, Margie Schurschlicht, yes. my friend, my bestie, Tara Whitney, like there were all these people who were part of that community mm -hmm. and, uh, two peas was a great community. Like that is literally where I met all of my crafty friends from the olden days. Like, and that's, you know, I, Margie is the only local in where I live in Minnesota. She is my only super close friend here that crafts. And um, for that, I'm always going to be grateful. And then meeting Tara. And I'm pretty sure that's where I saw you first. Or maybe, no, no, it must have been, weren't you? You must have been posting on two I don't know. Before. I don't remember. Okay. Honestly. I know. It's a long time ago. Uh, I don't it's remember. Yeah. I just, I just know that once I left scrapbooking, that was it. I was in a big. Oh, I'm sorry. I needed a refreshment. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki Donnelly, wherever you are. <laughs> and there's Gina and Christina. So one oh of our gosh. friends, Vicki, sent us these, these uh, cups. Mine usually sits behind me on display, but Mike got it down for me, so. Well, and I will say that this this mug is an updated oh, version. Oh, you guys did one. Yeah. And um, our friend Vicky is actually 
contributing 10 of these to my big giveaway next oh, weekend nice. um, for my 75,000 subscriber special, which Jennifer McGuire will be one of my guests. Yeah. It's on a, isn't it like on a Saturday? It's Saturday night. So, so I, I mean, have you, all day to get worked up. About it. Literally, I'm going to bring you in for 10 minutes. I'm going to try to come up with something funny, like five questions and then get you in and get you out. And I'm going to do the same thing for my other guests. And we'll actually only have two. So you'll have to be surprised with the other guests, but Ooh. oh my goodness, it's going to be Ooh. fun. And Jennifer is actually one of the sponsors. So you get, you get good yes. share handmade kindness merch. Yay. Yeah. I forgot what I said I'd give, but I'll give something I know. good. <laughs> I have it on a spreadsheet. <laughs> Look at and me. I'll, I'm like you. It's on a spreadsheet. And thank you, Paula and Miss Batra. People are giving, are contributing to our coffee date. Oh, super chat. That is so thank nice. you so much. Thank you, guys. We are just glad people are here. I was wondering who would want to come and say hi. But you know. Um, yeah, see, um, someone's asking, how can I get one of those cups? Well, Vicki, you might have to start an Etsy shop. That's all I'm saying. I don't know if you have one, but, oh, yes, so much good time. Um, but the thing is, is like, okay, so craft, uh, when I did finally start making cards and Jennifer was very happy, she was also very helpful to me. Um, you helped me a lot. Like you, you said to your friend, Gina, Hey, you should send some ink cubes to my friend Kathy. She's just getting yeah. started in stamping. And I remember getting all these ink cubes, all of which I have today, and only three of them have had to be re-inked. And that's like six years of crafting. But anyway, they, they have a long shelf life. They've lasted forever. But I remember thinking, what do I, what do, I do with all these? Little did I know, you know? I'm telling you, it's a slippery slope. Um, it's a slippery yeah, slope. they... Uh, it was my favorite thing to do when you started crafting would be to email my friends in the industry and say, Hey, you need to check out this Kathy and, and no. you know, get her using well, your products. Cause she's really good. It was great because so many people were so generous. And even you said, I had a CZ design Instagram account that I mostly shared. If you scroll all the way to the back beginning, it's like digital scrapbooking stuff. Cause I did have a digital scrapbooking line for a while and I had like no followers. And one, when I got into card making, Jennifer said, follow my friend, Kathy. She was, a, she, I, she's a good friend and a good crafter. And then like in one day I had like 6,000 followers and I was like, what, who, what do you do? So I appreciate I paid that. them all. I paid every Shh. one of them. One dollar, one dollar for each person. She spent thousands. Still paying it off. <laughs> she's still paying it off. I'm telling you. Um, but, but yeah, it's like, and, and, Again, it was a slippery slope. This is also a true story. The year I started scrapbooking, so I've, I've been an independent contractor for years, right? Self-employed since Cole was born. And every year, one of my expense accounts was craft supplies um, because you have to know what you're spending in scrapbooking. And, you know, because I wanted to, I, I, re, I track every receipt. The year I started crafting, 2017, I had spent more in that year on die cut machines, um, supplies, like the year the you started of, card making, right? The year I started card okay. making. Yes. I spent $4,700 on craft supplies. I still remember it because every prior year had been like 400, 300, because sure as a scrapbooker, I got a lot of stuff sent to me, but I still had to buy all of the basics. And, um, yeah, the first year of card making, I spent a ton. Dan was like, what are you doing? I'm like, Hey baby, write offs. So, oh. So I get it, you know, I get it. And, you know, now of course I'm in a position where I'm really fortunate that so many things are gifted to me. I mean, you know yeah. this as well, Jen, that we get things from companies and I will never not be grateful for it because yeah, I still buy well, you a still lot. shop. Yeah, I know you a do. Lot. Yes. I, I place a couple orders a month. Oh, yeah. I buy a lot. I, you know, I like I, the things. I, I'm a sucker. I get sucked into it just like everybody else. That's just, yeah. Yeah. It's natural. I think it's part of the crafting, you know? So it is. that's why I try I to always talk, look at ways to use a product creatively. Even if I'm not going to go back and use that product again, at right. least it kind of justifies me buying more and receiving more. So 
Well, and I will say on on your videos, if you don't, you show 17 ways to Sunday to use something. And, and I think that's really helpful. You know, oh, we got another super chat from Jennifer Wallens. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> More coffee. And two, actually, gr I, two girls in a garage. Thank you. You all oh are my too gosh. much. I just, just being question. here is so wonderful. Goodness. Um, Oh yeah, and Alex El Alexis. Tron oh. Tron look at us trying to pronounce names. Alex Tronskosko. Thank you. Um, someone just asked In about Chile. Lisa Berenger. Like, how is was that her name? The founder of Burn Burnson. Burn Lisa Burnson. Burnson. Yeah. I don't. I know. don't know how she is. Lisa I, B. I, I, I don't lost, either. Yeah, I lost track with those people. The only person that I that I still know where she is is the Stacy Julian. Um, yeah. And Wendy Smedley, who I used to work with at the magazine. Do you remember Wendy, Wendy Smedley, mm -hmm. Jen? Did you know she just yes. got remarried? Oh, did she? Nice. She did. She did. And I'm so happy oh, for, for her. her. It, yeah, her whole life has just taken a wonderful turn. But anyway. Um... Somebody <laughs> has a question here. When okay. is your 75,000 celebration? Date and time. Oh. October 28th, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's going to be fun. We're going to we're going to have guests, blooper reels, a video from my husband Dan, and then all the information for the giveaway, which is going to be hosted on my blog. And we've got about fifteen hundred dollars in prizes from all the sponsors and companies who I've worked with over the years. So I'm super grateful for that. And yeah, so it's next week. I don't think I'm going to do any live crafting because it's just going to be more of a fun event, maybe yeah. fruit salad. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's next weekend and I'm going to have Jen on and I have a surprise guest. Um, I'm, I, and fun will be had by all. Sounds good to me. Okay. I'm looking forward okay. to it. Yeah. 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 Um, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. So, and again, I, I thank you, Jennifer, for, you know, helping me in modeling what a YouTube channel can be because I, I love doing this. And um, it really literally was after I watched your videos and I thought, well, I know how to make videos. I mean, I've been doing it for scrapbook classes for years. I kind of want to have a YouTube channel. And I had one and did nothing with it. And and it really was seeing what you were doing. I thought, why well, I'm going to try that. So you made me make cards and have a YouTube channel, but I'm, I'm grateful for it all because it's, I can't imagine having something for my job that is as fun. I'm not sorry that I talked to you, okay. nagged you about this. Okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're, you've added a lot to the industry. Yay. So what is your favorite part of this industry or card making or this gig? Anything. What is your favorite thing? I think, okay, that's a great question. Um, wow. I didn't tell you I was going to ask this question. No, the time, but. no. I think... Okay, to just reiterate on what I just said, I feel like my favorite thing is, oh gosh, I think it's being creative without having to have anyone else's input. And that sounds, might sound weird, but it comes from scrapbooking. And when I decided to leave scrapbooking and I always knew that I, ha I can't tell this story and I can't tell that story. And I still have this need to create and be creative yeah. and, and design things and make things. Cause when I'm creating a card, it still feels like it's a design project, right? I'm designing elements just like I did on a scrapbook page. There's just no story. And so I think my favorite part is sitting down and having complete creative freedom to do kind of whatever I want. Yeah. Even if it's something that a manufacturer sends me something or a group of products and says, you want to be part of this blog hop? And I'm like, sure, I'd love to. Still no one is telling me yeah. how to create. And so yeah. there is a freedom in that. Um, and then add to that, that I've managed to work this into how I make a living now. That is the best of both worlds, but it's the, yeah. it's the creative freedom that I feel when I am sitting down to make something. And you know, most of the time when I'm sitting down to make something, the video camera's on and I film it. And yeah. if it turns out great, great. If I make a lot of mistakes, no worries. I still put it all together and share it in the hopes that people will find yeah. that permission to go have fun and, and have that creative freedom. That's yeah. what I love. And, 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I think just being in, you know, if, even if a company sends you a bunch of product, you're using what you like and you're only using companies who products you like, you know, like right. for example, waffle flour, you know, that there, you know, when you, there's a new waffle flour release, you can see it and know right away that it's something you would use. Right. Yeah. And I do, I do, I participate every month with them um, because yeah. I love Nina. I love oh, her mind. So I love what she comes up with. I mean, I am a product designer as well. And there, are, I have limits, you know, I don't draw and I don't come up with three dimensional. I, my brain just doesn't work that way. I, I have a lane that I stay in. Yeah. So seeing what other companies come up with um, and design, it, it's, it's so fun for me as a product designer. And if I say to myself, I wish I would have thought of that. That's my favorite. You know what I mean? When I'm like, yeah. I love this so much. Why can't I do this? But again, yeah. we stay in our lanes and we enjoy what other companies are designing. So one of the things I love about you is you design product. You have right. products that are very much your style. And what I've always said a million times in videos about your products is that they are designed in such a way that they could work with a variety of styles. So like you could use your thanks dies on a Tim Holt style card, or you can use it on like a cutesy lawn fawn card. You could really go many directions with your products. And so they're more universal. That's one of the things I like and about your line. And I also like that you not, you have your own line, but you use lots of people's products. Oh yeah. You um, lose, use a lot of people's products. And I, I really yeah. appreciate that. I appreciate that because it's like if I were just using my own things and I should do, I, I try to be conscious of use more of your line. But then when I'm working with other products from other companies as well, it is fun to mix those in. Um, again, I'm a designer, but I'm a fan. And that's mm. what makes it fun to play with other people's lines. So. Yeah. And Jennifer, you're not above giving me some really good ideas. You will slip them in sometimes and put a little bug in the air and I'll be like, oh yeah, I should do that. So, <laughs> so you know, I appreciate that. I'm not sure I always have good ideas. I'm not sure about that. Um, somebody yeah. said, um, somebody asked, so do you talk to yourself while you're crafting just in case it turns into a video later or do you just do voiceovers? Me, I do voiceovers. So I will film for hours and hours and then I edit out down. So I edit out all the mistakes. I edit out just, you know, the in between stuff and then I do a voiceover. I ha I can't do a video and talk at the same time. I but that's what Kathy does because that's what works for her. Yeah. So we we was, work different I, that way. Yeah, and I switched to that during it was honestly during the start of the pandemic when I realized I can go because again, it was a little ins it was inspired by Gina in her old videos. And I'm like, well, she has a lot of videos that she films them live, edits them yep. for time, but it yep. does make them longer. You can't yep. get around that. And when I no. do voiceover videos, which occasionally I do, like if I have been sick or people are doing construction or whatever, they're always going to be shorter and more succinct because again, I typically only do one card. Right. Um, it, it's just a time saver. It's funny too, because even with all the technology that, that we have that works, nine out of 10 times things work. And then the 10th time something was up with my mic. And then I'm like, I just spent two hours filming yeah. and the audio levels are terrible. And, you know, so I don't know, I guess uh, I always film unless it's something that I'm doing that isn't for public right. consumption, like certain birthday cards or certain things that I'm doing for other people. But I just turn the camera on and talk. And the thing yeah. is, um, Jennifer and I are both introverts. I know sometimes it seems like, what do you mean? You're so talkative and you seem, we are, but like I talk to myself because that is comforting to me while I'm creating, but then I'm done. I'm not taking it out to the streets. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I always talk to myself because I find myself somewhat entertaining when I'm alone. Well, well, I think one of the reasons I also do voiceovers is <laughs> you should see like when I have a vi d like com have done a voiceover for a video when it's complete, I will have like 60 little voice clips that are all pieced together because I get oh. tongue tied like I just did. I'm not great with words. I went into engineering for a reason. And <laughs> so I'm not as good with words. So by being able to edit 
more, like say something and say, oh, that didn't, that's not what I meant or whatever. I can yeah. edit it down. So for me, that is the most important point, part of doing a voiceover and maybe part of my fear of crafting live. Now I've done classes live, but that's right. different. Like I, I do the cards ahead of time. I've got it all planned. I, I create the cards and then I do it again and make sure I got the pace right. You know, there's a lot of practicing and I can't yes. do that for a live every week on my channel. So I've got to find my way here. And so Kathy's been, she just is always giving advice. Gina's given some advice too. It's just, you know, it's just taken that jump. And I took a jump before and I went live with Greg and I was going to keep going at yeah. <laughs> It was it great. Just is what it is. You guys were fun together. And, and I yeah. thought, wow, you, you're a good interviewer. Like, I know you're a good crafter, but I thought you're, you're, um, your interview with Greg was really good. And I'm like, this is great. She seems so natural. And that's me sitting back and watching it, right? But yeah. you are good on camera. You're gonna have to take a nap later. But you know, um, and I actually saw, I saw a funny comment from Barb Wong and Barb's like, I picture Kathy narrating her grocery shopping, her laundry, it's like, <laughs> not the grocery shopping, sometimes the laundry. Yeah, and I do say to do myself, you, do. you know, yeah. but, um, uh, I see another question from Twyla and, and also I want to add that if you, if there are questions that we miss, cause we get yeah, tied up, hard. just leave them in the comments on Jennifer's video and I'll come back here. And if there's anything that, you know, I missed or Jennifer missed, but, um, I, Jennifer and I both use different software. I use premiere pro the Adobe program and Jen, don't you use final, I use cut? final cut pro? Yeah. But if, if you're so, so somebody asked about what editing software we use, if you are, thinking about doing YouTube videos, iMovie is a great place to start. Yes, um, Fantastic. And in fact, it got a big upgrade years ago and I probably wouldn't have left, stopped using it if that upgrade had happened. Anyways, I'm on Final Cut Pro. I Somebody also asked, do I spend more time editing or creating? Between editing, voiceover, blog posts, taking the photos, editing photos, I bet I spend more time on that end than I do the creating. The creating is like here and there because there's a million things going on, but I, that's what I would say. I, but here's the thing, I'm, let's be very clear, I'm slow. I'm very slow, I'm not good at these things, it doesn't come naturally so I have to work harder. Whereas like Christine and Kathy, they're pros at taking photos and using Photoshop and I'm, I'm on the struggle bus. I'm on the struggle well, bus. I just, I, I was going to ask you, Jennifer, what is what is the hardest part of the process of what you do? Um, you had to pick one. Duh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not good with photos and editing photos, but I've just decided I don't think that's as important as what right. I teach, so I just let that be. But voiceovers, they take me a long time. And it's hard because I can't do it out with my kids or, you know, just any time of day. I go in my closet and I usually, you know, have to come and go. Somebody's coming in. It. I think that's probably... In my old house, I would do them in my minivan in the garage sometimes. Because oh, wow. it was like the okay. only quiet. I don't know. So it's getting yeah, better it's now that my kids are getting older, but... Eesh. And that's just it. I think, you know, I, d I do enjoy doing voiceovers sometimes. I actually yesterday filmed, um, I was replacing nibs on my Copic markers. And every now and then I'm like, I should make a reel because Instagram says you should have reels. And I, wh that's I fine. So I thought I'll make a reel of how easy it is to swap your chisel nib for a fine point nib. And um, I did a quick voiceover. And when I play it back, I'm like, you sound pretty good. Like, cause here's the only thing with going with recording live vocals. And I was actually chatting with Ralph Tyndall about this yeah. on messaging. You, you, I edit out a lot of this. I cluck a um, lot while I'm crafting. Um, uh, I make big size, like I cluck. And so you can't listen to someone cluck for 26 minutes straight. And so, um, uh. I just wanted you to know that, that I cluck so, and I edit things So you out. call me a goat. Now I have to call you a, a chicken? A chicken. <laughs> I'm the chicken. I'm the crafty chicken. Um, but you'll, you, I try to keep it just, yeah, <laughs> under, under wraps. 
Um, oh, IRC, is it good to put question? You know, yes, when you put question, like for example, I just saw Liz's question, how in the world are you two so fantastic? You know, Jennifer and I wake up every day and I text her and she, I'm like, why are we so great? And Jen's like, I guess it's just the way it is. I'm kidding. Um, most if of you the saw time, our text, we are far from fantastic. We're we both are, struggling we through something. Mostly at five o'clock, I send Jennifer a picture of potato chips and a bottle of wine and just say, this is what I'm doing right now. No, no, give yourself credit. It's only a glass, not a bottle. It's, just I a know, glass. it's only a glass. It's only a glass. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm sorry if we're missing questions, uh, but it's, I'm just so excited that I can see them here. I, I think this is very cool. Um, Somebody asked, do we have assistants? So I, I my I brother works with me. So he's my tech guy. He does like my web stuff. He does, he's right here. He set this all up and he's a godsend uh, because with the family and everything and all the other stuff going on, that, that has been a blessing. He was an engineer too and he gets me. He puts up with me. Um, I so that's also should say Mike helps me with my website, which is pretty awesome um, to have someone who actually understands WordPress. That's the one thing in my life I know nothing about. Um, I, I just don't. I, there's things you have to pick and choose. I yeah. wish I had web, web coding background, but I don't. And Mike does help me with my website, which is very helpful. Um, Part I saw of a his... question at part of his role was to help my friends with technology because a lot of crafters, it's not their jam. So he's right. helped quite a few people along the way. Cause it's, I just, I want this industry to keep going. So it's fun. Yeah. It gives, it lets him be techie. And he's he, good. He's good at figuring this stuff out too. Um, I do see a question about that chisel nib thing and someone else had left this question asked if I have noticed my markers drying out after I switched my nibs. Um, I have not had any marker drying, but here's the thing. I don't color very often. Yeah. If you've ever watched my channel, I'm probably coloring once or twice a month max. Um, but I haven't had that issue. Um, and again, it could be that your markers, if you color a lot, they, they can go lower on ink, but you can still pull that nib out and refill. I haven't yeah. done it because nothing runs out. So I just wanted to say that. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I, I'm the crafty chicken. I, That's great. I changed some of my nibs a long time ago, and I haven't noticed them running okay. out. I haven't changed them all. The idea was I was going to, I bought all the nibs, and I was going to change them all, but I didn't. So the I, ones that have been changed, like my favorite colors, I have, I haven't noticed any of them wearing out. And if you're wondering about change, we're talking about changing the nibs on a Copic, Copic marker. And um, Kathy just put up a, um, a reel about that. Yeah. So, and everybody's asking about when they're going to see Mike. Mike is, if you took my introvert, introvertedness and took Kathy's introvertedness and done a million times over, that would be Mike. What's wrong? Video. <laughs> He's like, don't, don't tell them that. No, um, he was just telling me that your video is a little fuzzy there. Am I, I you know, know, it could just be the stream. Um, and yeah. just stay with me. If I'm fuzzy, just know people. I am really crisp in real life. Crisp, crisp, crisp. Um, Nicole has a question. I do think this is interesting. She wants to know. <laughs> there's oh, there's Mike. Mike. Hey, great job, Mike. <laughs> Super proud of you, man. Now he's going to um, need nap, man. Yeah. That's a lot uh, of extroverting. How many, <laughs> how many hours per day or week would you say you put into your work? I know it is a full-time job for both of you, but was wondering how much over 40 hours you work. Jennifer, how would you answer that? Um, I try to work all day when the kids are at school and some, I, I work more than I should. Um, but it's part of being a mom with it, you know, like, you know, I, like Lila, she came home today with a headache. And so I've been up with her all morning. So that's like a priority and there's always something going on. So yeah. I probably work more than I should. Like I didn't get to work this morning. So I'll probably be working some tomorrow. I try, but I also, it's a blessing because if there's a day like earlier this week, I just had too much pain. I just didn't work. So it give, it, it all adds up to probably a normal working amount, but 
it looks and feels like it's a heck of a lot more. I, I that agree. That makes any um, sense? True story. Once, um, a couple years ago, I said, I'm going to track my work. I have a little freelance timer that I use when, when I used to do more freelance work, which I don't do any anymore. And because um, I, I was curious, I'm like, it has got to be 60, yeah. 70 hours a week. It wasn't. It was 38. Um, and that was on a typical week. And the reason, like, like Jennifer said, you know, I wake up early. I'm usually in here by 630 and I hit it hard until noon. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, if I have to go to Costco, the beautiful thing about being self-employed is you can go to Costco and you don't have to ask anyone, is it okay if I run an errand? The bad thing about being self-employed is if you don't work, you don't make money. Um, yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. And so I think what happens to me is that I work many days in a row without ever taking time off. So yeah. even though, you know, Saturday I may only put in half a day, but it has to happen. Now, I don't have little kids anymore and I yeah. get to spend time with my adult children, which is fantastic. My daughter's here a lot, my son's here. Um, but Dan, my husband is a teacher. He works a lot too, because he changed yeah. careers. So we are in this place right now where we both work on Saturdays, we both work on Sundays, um, but um, it's just part of it. And that's why I like, when you said it's a blessing, I'm grateful that I love it so much. So for me, sitting down and knowing that I have to film a video, I kind of get excited about it too. You know, yeah. I'm like, well, I have to do this on Saturday. Oops. <laughs> get, yeah. Instead of going and doing something social with other humans. Sure. You sure. know, but it, I think it levels out like, yeah, oh, I more than like, I should as well. I think a lot of people would, who do what, who love their job will say the same thing. I think when you are passionate about your job and you're working with people you really like, you tend to do, to do more. And so I think that's part of the whole, the whole wanting to work. It, it makes me happy. And yeah. So I, yeah, it's something I'm always, I, I've tried for years to have a better balance, but I really truly believe nobody's got the perfect balance and we yeah. just have to give ourselves grace. So it's hard when you really love a company, like in some, you know, when I've seen this industry go through struggles in the past, you want to be able to do more, right? So there's that too. You want to be able to contribute as much as you can to keep things going. So yeah. Eh. Do we work more than we should? Probably. But, you know, yeah. th there's a lot of time where we're just, you know, goofing around. Like, I'm supposed to be here filming, but I'm texting Kathy, you know, or, you know, I'm supposed to be doing something and I get distracted by something else. Oh, and another thing with our job, we do the organizing, we do the cleanup, we do, like, when I was an engineer, oh, yeah. there was, you know, an uh, admin person who would plan our travel or, you know, restock things, like, do a lot of helpful stuff. And that, yeah. So you have to do more. There's a lot of stuff you have to do when <laughs> I'm going. Um, when you uh, that is like you aren't getting paid for. Like not anyways. It's just. I mean, yeah. Well, I was surprised actually, Jennifer. When I asked you, we were working on we, when the Simon Says Stamp website changed, and there were some linking issues that were happening. Yeah. And I said, well, you should tell your person who does your links because I was under the impression that the person who works for online card classes did all your stuff and you're no. like oh you mean me you can yeah. tell me and i was like oh right so you really are sort of a jack of all trades right you ha i mean well we have to be thing, you have to be and yeah. and you might not like it all right it, it, i don't love accounting i don't love tax season i do have an accountant but i have to prepare right all of the itemized stuff for her and like it's just part of the process um yeah yeah, I, and I and it's so funny because um, a lot of people will, and maybe you get this, not a lot of people, but they'll ask me, you know, how do you turn a love of crafting into a business? And I think one of the things that Jen and I both have in our back pocket that helped us so much, years in corporate America. Yeah, totally. You, you know, like just learn, just being part of a culture where you had to do so many different things helped me become a crafter yep. who was able to turn it into a business. 
I don't it's know. funny I just people want to know if there's a home break in because some oh. <laughs> he had a hood on going to help. Um <laughs> he called that's my son and his room is here. That's the one thing about my studio. I love this studio, but I live in a very old, weird house. And the yeah. only way you can get to our back bedroom is to walk through this room. Most of the time, it's not a big deal. And he's, you know what, he, he shows up every now and then in the back of my videos. But it's no, okay. I, I'm safe. I am marking myself safe from intruders. Wonderful. Yeah, my craft room is at the far end of like our basement. So where the kids, you know, when Colin has a bunch of friends over or whatever. And so, you know. Oh, it's, I have to walk the through them to get to my, yeah, it, well, it's like a walkout. So I have right, in the back. That. Yeah, it's downstairs. It, this house actually, uh, the guy who we bought this house from played football and he had this massive exercise room and okay. it was like mirrors on the wall and ceiling and filled with all these giant weights. And the first thing I did was tear up the exercise room and put in a craft room. Hey, you know what? Priorities, priorities. Yes. The exercise is a secondary, you know, yes. secondary thing. Um, I did, I did when I saw him later apologize. I said, you know that weightlifting room. <laughs> oh my gosh. It, it's no longer. Um, I see another question. Uh, Stellar Crafts by Pam says, how did you decide you wanted to create crafting or turn crafting into a business rather than just keeping it just as a hobby? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a hard question to almost answer because I feel like we have been so well, Jen, you left engineering. So, you know, I, I know most people who do what we do never like really set out to make this their career. Right. It just kind of happened naturally. And I really feel like that's the best way you just create and share. And if you know, it's meant to happen, it happens. And I think that's how it worked for me. I was an engineer. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't think I was going to be leaving. And then, you know, I started creating and then I had companies start talking to me and then I got a book deal and that, that was it. Like it was just kind of, I don't know. I feel like it, for a lot of people, it, it just happens. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I was a journalist turned graphic designer and never crafted a day in my life and thought crafting yep. was like, oh, scrapbooking you know, like I wasn't yeah. a big fan. Um, and then literally what happened was I had children, which I know you don't have to have kids to be a scrapbooker, but some primal urge said, you must take more photos of children, which I did. But a scrapbook store opened in my in my town of, uh, well, near where I live in Roseville, Minnesota called Archivers. And some of you might yes. be familiar with that chain because mm -hmm. they were great. And it was just we a one beautiful, here too. beautiful store, right? I, I think they understood merchandising and how to make something seem cool. And long story short, I didn't jump into this as a career right away, but when my son was born, I quit working because as a graphic designer at the time, I didn't make enough money to cover two kids in daycare. That was the reality. And so I'm like, all right, I'll freelance. I can freelance for these companies I used to work for. Then I started scrapbooking. Then I submitted some pages to Simple Scrapbooks Magazine, which I saw happened. the very yeah. first time I went to archivers, and got hooked. Long story short, I ended up working for them as a contributor. And then I kept saying to them, you know, I'm actually a graphic designer. If you ever yep. need help laying out your magazine from, you know, far away, and that turned into a full time job. So I was already taking what I do, what my yeah. trade was, and then bring it in into a corporate culture that was crafting. And then they said, Hey, same thing, Jennifer, do you want to write a book? I'm like, Okay, yep. you know, it just built. It built yeah, over time. It, it's never it just kind of happens. I don't yeah, know. and then crazy. once it's happened, you just keep building on it. And I yeah. mean, it, but we've been doing this for twenty years. I mean, it's been years. a yeah. long time. And I, I look so young. That's what's I know. so weird. She was I two am, when she started. I am so. I mean, you know, when I get to be Jennifer's age, I hope that I can look back <laughs> on my career and say, wow, you did great, Kath. <laughs> I love you, Kathy. Oh, oh, Diana has, or Diane has a question about how do you avoid burnout? Uh, um, and she oh. talks about something she had done. It's not fun anymore. It's, I, I know for me, Jennifer, when you're constantly getting fun new things, 
I never feel burnt out. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I like do. I always feel like, oh, this is here. Oh, this is here. So knock on wood, six years into card making, I haven't had much burnout. So I do. I do. Okay. But I, it, because I try with every, 99% of my videos, I really try to focus on the technique so that people can learn something like I'm not trying to influence anything. I'm trying to teach and I'm hoping I really work hard, huh, lose a lot of sleep on coming up with a technique that yes. they could use with other things that, so, so I run out of ideas and that's where a burnout can happen. Um, yeah. and then I get frustrated because I see these new things I really want to play with, but I can't actually get to the creating. So I think that you know, losing your mojo, burnout, all that. I think it's natural for a lot of people, especially if you've been doing it for a long time. And, and you know, other things going on in your life affect how creative oh. you feel. And That's so true. what I do is I just, ma I do mass producing of cards, make a bunch of die cuts, things like that. Um, try to clean up. <sighs> but I try to do something that will get me ready for when I am creative again. Yeah. So that I can that just jump right point. in. I mean, I, yeah, I think to me, this is all still shiny and new. And yeah, the difference between Jennifer and I is she is very focused on techniques that can apply to multiple products where yeah. I tend to focus on, I'm going to do one card at one time. I'm going to blow my own mind by how cute it is. You know, it's like, I still feel green in this. Like there's still so many things I haven't tried, um, techniques that I, I want to try. So uh, yeah, I, I haven't felt burnt out with card making yet. I did certainly with scrapbooking because it was like, yeah, I'd been doing it for 16 years and I was yeah. working, I work for scrapbooking cards today magazine. I'm their art director. So I still work uh, as a graphic still, yeah. designer in a crap, but I just, I begged our publisher, Catherine. I said, I love you. I love this magazine, but please, can I stop scrapbooking? She yeah. said, yes. She goes, will you make cards at least? I'm like, yes, I will. Yeah. Yeah. So it's refreshing. Yeah. It's refreshing. Yeah. Oh, uh, a couple people ask things. Um, what, what did you just see? I, I have another intruder that just walked through. Oh, did Same you? Same one. It's all good. It's all good. It's totally fine. Hey, we have um, kids. It's life. Somebody asked, uh, can we provide a class on how to set up YouTube channel, what equipment to buy, all that. I am not the person to do that. I set up a YouTube channel, gosh, so many years ago. It's completely different. I wouldn't know how to do it, how to save my life. And my equipment is always changing. And I find out, I just text Kathy, what's the camera I need? Send me a link. And she sends me a link and I buy it and I hand it to my brother to set up. I am not, I am not that. But I do know, like Laura Basson did something on her blog on how she takes pictures. And I know a lot of people do their videos with an iPhone. So you don't have to go fancy. And yeah. so everybody's different. So it's hard to, to ask one person to say how they do it because right. different people are in different stages um, of this. It's just a, it's a, and I know that what I have set up isn't the best. I well, totally know that. So Yes, I don't know that I'm the all, best to share. I filmed with an uh, iPhone for the first five years. Yeah. Um, that's all I used. It is still great quality. If you go back and watch early videos of mine, the quality is crystal clear. It's fantastic. I just yeah. wanted to be, I wanted to migrate to a video camera because yeah. I could see how it benefited Jennifer and Christina Werner, who both use that. And it is, it, it's just made my filming easier. But it's the same thing. Like here, here's what, here's where I looked for a lot of information. Other crafty people. I, I have this friend, Bethany and her husband is like a tech nerd and he yeah. figured out how to make her craft room work like a fine tuned machine. And he said, Oh, Kathy here, watch this video, watch this video, watch this video. And I did. So I do know there's so many wonderful resources on YouTube yeah, already about I want to set up a simple filming setup. What do I do? There's so many. And even if they're not geared towards crafters, I guarantee you there's a ton to learn. You know what I sure. mean? So yeah. And I, I might do a blog post someday. I do have a blog post. That's my craft room tour that touches on the equipment that I use, but 
a yeah. lot of it is trial and error. I can't tell you how many things didn't work. Plugs were wrong. <sighs> hookups were wrong. Lights were bad. You know, it's, it's just trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I, and everybody's going to do different, but I do recommend if you're just starting, use, an, use what you have. Yeah, use really, what you have. There's no reason to go out and, yeah, there's no, iPhones I don't think existed when I started doing videos. No, so I just didn't. got what Christina Werner told me to get, and I think she was in town and she even set it up for me because I was completely clueless. So somebody, yeah. a few people have asked about the book that I had. So back oh, when yeah. I was scrapbooking, um, <clears throat> I met a guy from a company called Autumn Leaves and he asked me if I would do some book stuff. And so I contributed to a bunch of books that he did. And then like what design, it was called the designing with series. Yep. The one that I did was designing with words. I mean, this was 20 some years ago. Um, I, I don't even, calendar. I don't think I have them. We did a calendar where every day was a different project. I have them. Oh, great. Mike has them. Mike has them. Um, oh, my gosh. But there I were all them. these different designing with vellum, divine, whatever. So these were, these are I... long outdated, but. You could find them maybe on Etsy, but I have, I have some of the designing with. That's where yeah. I first saw like Heidi Swap. And I remember thinking, yeah. she's yeah. so cool. And the yeah. fact that she is still so cool today, she's yeah. like. I just she gets cooler. I don't understand. What? How does she get cooler with age? How is she doing this? She is cooler than she ever was. But yeah, um, some of those people from the old, the olden mm -hmm. days that we were all part of are still yep. out there making wonderful contributions and crafting. And yeah, so yeah, I mean, Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz. Yeah, well, I mean, he's been around. He's been around as long as we have. Yeah. And he was one also who... I don't think he really set out to be this what, no. I don't, artist, you know, like it just yeah. kind of, the, his path led him here and man, right. it's like where he should be. I mean, it's he's where he should be. Yeah. exactly where he should be. So, yeah. yeah. Um, somebody said what, uh, Kenzie said, what do you recommend when you don't know what to make, where to start? I haven't made a card in a few weeks. I get it. I'm kind of there right now too. What I usually do is, what I have done in the past is I will recreate something I've done in the past, but use different products. So you take the pressure off of the design or the technique or whatever, but you get the joy of using new. So sometimes you'll see in my card, I'll mention, or my videos, I'll mention like a go-to design. It'll be like a card that has an, ang like there's a lot on the bottom, like background, and there's an angle and the sentiments right above it. That's like my go-to when I'm stumped because I know I can use just about any products I have for a background. And then I can reach for one of my die cut sentiments, which I have done off screen when I am stuck. And I can grab those things and make a card and just getting your, putting your toes in it kind of kicks me back in place. I also like to prep for next time. Like I have, I need to do a video on it, but I um, have a bunch of die cut sentiments like, Kathy's scripty hello and thanks. Like I have die cut a bunch of those, glued them together and they're ready to go and I keep them in a little pocket. And so when I'm stumped, I can just grab it and add it to a background and I'm ready. So I think fall back on those things that you are most comfortable creating with and maybe throw in something new because we it really feels terrible when we invest in new products but don't put them to use, right? So it makes right. you feel better when you use what you have and then maybe pull out so maybe use a new thing for your background but then pull out an old sentiment stamp for the card too and that way you feel good because you're using your old stuff too so just kind of mix yeah. it all together yeah. i don't know that's what i do that's great <laughs> i do what love do jennifer do? does she has a stash of die cuts like she is you cut so much stuff out at once and then you have all these things just to go yeah i it's love that it makes me feel good for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, I have issues. We all have issues. You know what? They're great <laughs> issues. I actually just saw a question that Tammy asked about in videos. How do you keep the lights off your glass mats? Because I think mm. I switched to a glass mat long after Jennifer was using one and Christina. My lights are way off to the side. Yeah. They're, they're so not when, directly over. You have to have I, them. 
Yeah, when I yeah. built my craft room, I made sure there was no light directly above. They're round, but I do, my glass mat has gotten bigger. So I get two reflections at the top. I just cr and crop my video in closer. And I think I might have to change things. See, we're always changing our setup. So I'm in the current, in the process of trying to change that. But you know, it. you think something works and you're so excited and then you realize, wait a second, that doesn't yeah. work for what I do now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I have done a video on how I do mass die cutting. Um, I'll have oh, to yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe share it in the comment because people are asking how I do that. Um, it really, it, it's a matter of I have the Anna Griffin Empress machine and it has big mama plates. And so I can die cut a bunch at once. Um, when I just need to be creative without thinking, I'll sit at the kitchen table and die cut a bunch of things. And I also um, will hire people to do it sometimes like for, like when uh, a bunch of Colin's friends were going to Young Life Camp and some kids need to raise money. I'll give them a bunch of die cutting to do, and that way they can raise money for camp. So things like that. But yeah. um, too bad they don't go to camp every week, so I keep <laughs> having them do it. But you know, anyway, oh, when we're at an hour. Out, we're like at over an hour. Camp. Are we supposed well, to Jennifer, keep going? We should because we we talked about wanting to talk oh. about products that we're loving right now, and I think we should. You know, just because <laughs> we're not. <laughs> you know what's funny. I said, I texted Kathy before this. I said, you know, one thing I, we should do is I will talk, ask you about three things that you're really into right now. And I'll talk about three things I'm really into right now. And the best part is I didn't think of three things. Oh, you didn't? Oh, no. Do I get to go first? So you get to go first. So okay. what are, right. what are, what's something that you just lately have been looking, using and thinking, I really like this. May I show you my table? Yes. Okay, here we go. Um, I am going to remove, goodbye, Hall of Fame. Goodbye. <laughs> it's going to go back in its glass case because I don't want to, okay. Now, if you have watched my channel or if you, if you have not, this product is my favorite product uh, of 2023. Yes. It is the Brutus Monroe Aqua Pigment in Gilded. It is the coolest gold spatter I've ever used. Yes. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a lot of watercolor paints. And in fact, I will tell you, I have moved away. I bought some fancy ones. I almost never use them. The only thing I paint with now, if I'm going to paint, is distress ink smushed onto my mat. I, I just, gotcha. I don't need fancy. But I always want gold spatter. This stuff is so great. And I love it. And I've been way overusing it. Um, I think he has other colors. And it's just yes. a great product. He also just released a new product that is slightly different. It comes in a bottle that has like a nail polish oh. um, applicator. And he said it's really easy to tap. I don't know what it's called, but it is very similar to this. This is something that I am obsessed with. That's product Good. number one. Product and, number two. And Christopher, who owns Brutus oh. Monroe, I think... Yeah. We need to acknowledge what a good guy he is. Whenever there's a fundraiser or somebody in need, he will be the first to reach out and say, how can I help? Like when Andy was Andy Granick was looking for a kidney, he yeah. contacted me and said, give me the PDF of the flyers. I'll print them and put them in all the orders going out. Like he just is on it for helping people. I just appreciate Very big hearted that. person. Yes. And I, I am grateful to know him. Okay, the other thing, this might seem very not sexy, but I am telling you what, <laughs> these, these Hero Arts metal snips have become my new go-to snips, and here's why. Now, if you ever buy any CZ Design stamps and, or dies, sometimes we nest our dies. The reason we do this is to save money and to bring the cost down. We're always trying to figure out, like metal takes up a lot of space, and anything you can nest, it can be priced lower. Um, Sometimes I've had people say, Kathy, I can't get in to, to like, how do you do it? Once I started using these, I can snip now because get they into come the to nooks such, and crannies. Yes, yeah. they come to a very fine point. So this, I've had them. I bought, Jennifer, I bought them after seeing a video of yours. And yeah. I thought maybe, maybe these are better than my beetalons. They are. And the other thing <laughs> that I'm obsessed with, again, doesn't look that sexy, but it is all the grip mats from Waffle mm. Flower Crafts. Yes. Now, 
I actually cut this. I cut this one because I wanted to have a little piece of grip mat for holding small die Smart. cuts and things. Yeah. Smart. But I think it's a wonderful uh, product. Also, you know, Altenu has their sticky mat inside their stamp wheel, which is similar, does the same thing. I think these are so wonderful. So those are the three things. It, again, these are, again, two basics, right? And one kind of fun thing, but I, this is this has made me yeah. really excited about new new supplies. So those, and those three good three companies things. there: Waffle Flower, Brutus Monroe, and Hero Arts. Exactly. I use I use those snippers too. I I like them because you can get into those nooks and crannies. I was going to yeah. get it out of the drawer right here, but I remembered I'm die cutting upstairs, so I took them upstairs to okay. cut apart a bunch of dies. Um, yeah. Definitely exactly. love those. And then the um, waffle flower mats. I love that she has them in every size you can imagine. Yes, me too. And they're both and, inside my, my Misty's. Yeah. And I love other sticky mats. I've used a variety of sticky mats. But one of the things I like about that is it seems to, the more you use it and clean it, it seems to actually stick a bit better. Yeah. And honestly, I wash mine, uh, the ones in my Misty, once, or I have two, one in each size Misty. I just wash them once a week with um, yeah. Dawn dish soap and hot water, and then I let them air dry away from dust. And I have a little drawer where I have a stencil drying rack and I just pop them in there, let them dry, and they are as sticky as can be. And I love it. I love it. I don't do any of that. I just use a baby wipe. You're fancy. That's, <laughs> I mean, so I don't fancy. have, I guess I, I've never used baby wipes because I, I just think I started card making way after baby wipes would have been a thing. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Hey, you don't have kids so there at you home. go. I still had baby wipes around for a while there. Oh, so. yes. Jennifer will be adding links to the things we talk about in her description. Oh. So um, I put check a, back. I just real quick created a list, and I'm sharing okay. the link in the comments so you can see oh, whatever we're go. talking about. Okay, so, perfect. Um, Includes both companies. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. Uh, let's see here. Where is that magical place away from dust D wants to know? <laughs> oh, it's it's in a drawer. I have okay. uh, these IKEA cabinets, right? <laughs> and I I did a little insert drawer in my Calyx unit, so I put a stencil drying rack in there. Yeah. And when I when I wash my mats, I stick them in that on the stencil mat and close, and they air dry. Yeah. It's a it's like a hyperbaric. Can I chamber. live in there? You can. I need to live in there. <laughs> That's where can I. Can we put our craft space? room in there? <laughs> I um. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's how I do that one. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, what else do we got? So Jennifer, you don't, you didn't pull any products, but you're the question asker, asker, and you're the host. So that's fine. Well, the um, only thing I could think of was what, well, like the first thing I thought of, which is probably what we should, what I should include here would be the Spellbinders shears. Do you have these? I do, and I, I keep forgetting to use them. I love them because they don't get muckety-muck, and they okay. just cut so nicely. I don't know. Let's, they're super let's... smooth. So it was one of those things I'm like, I don't really need other scissors, right? And then I started using them because, you know, when you're creating, your scissors get hidden behind things and under things, yes. right? So you just yeah. keep reaching to the drawer for another pair. So I reach out, and I'm like, oh, the way they cut Super nice. So that's one thing that I've been using a lot. And if you see, okay. I mean, I still like little scissors too and some of the others I've used in the past. But here's, yeah. th this is, I think this is really a good thing to say. When you see us use new products in a video, it doesn't mean that the products we used in the past, like we don't like anymore. It's just right. something new has come along and we still, like I'll still use some of my old scissors. Like the, when the Tim Holtz trimmer came out, I was so excited, the big one the rotary one, but I still reach for my other one too. I still use it. Um, yep. We just like to show lots of options. It's kind of like when you get a new car, maybe your old card still worked, but you like some of the things in the new car option. I don't know. Um, right. So yeah, it says if you got scissors you love, great. But if you're looking for a new pair, something about these. I'm going to have nice. to try them because they, okay, I've had them. And I have not used them because the ones that I have been reaching for all like all yeah. the time are the Simon Says Stamp Everyday ones because they don't stick to the foam tape. And I love that. 
Someone told me in a video the other day, and it might have actually been Carissa Wiley. She, when I was, I was cutting foil in a video, and she's like, "Honey, use the spellbinder scissors." I didn't even think to do that. Yeah. Here I am using this rotary um, yeah. trimmer cutter that everybody said you are doing it wrong because yeah. I literally do it towards me, and it makes people panic because they're like, "You're going to take your arm off one of these days." So, I will try yeah. these. Have you tried them for foil? Yeah, yeah, that's what I use to cut because it just. Goes okay, smooth I'm gonna as do it. Be. I'm gonna try it. Yep. Um, anything else that you have been thinking? I well, absolutely I was, love this. I was thinking about there's something that I don't show often in videos because I edit out like the cleanup process. I I am very clear. I don't always clean my stamps. I usually just take a dry cloth and just wipe the ink off. But if yeah. you want to switch between colors and you have a color that's being a little um, stuck on the stamp. Something I don't show just because it's cleaning and who wants to watch cleaning is the, I've just looked at my drawer what I reach for the most. <laughs> See? Okay. True story. I bought this with, after one of your videos, I did not know it existed. See? It has changed my stamp cleaning life. Like when you're done, when you're or like, like she said, if you want to change colors or if you're using like a pigment ink, like a Simon Says Stamp Intense Black or yep. Versifying Claire, and then you use like a little, I, I have the Ultra Clean, Clean from Simon, but I also have the Hero Art somewhere. This is great. I love this tool. I'm so glad you mentioned it because I'm yep. like, and and these come off. Yep. So you can so wash the them. On. They're Velcroed on and you can wash them with soapy water. Um, so when this yes. is, what I do is when this starts to get, I can tell there's a lot of ink on it. I just yep. take it to my sink and I use the spray nozzle and just spray the living daylights out of it. I don't even use soap because I'm lazy and then okay. it's clean, but they sell replacements of these, but I've never yeah. had to replace it. So I just do one spray of my ultra clean and then I use the scrubber. Yep. I bought, I bought an extra pack. So while one is yep. drying in my lint free stencil rack drying compartment, um, and I just use a little, I've started using this soap. Um, I don't know how many of you use beauty blenders, but the, the, the brand beauty blender has a lavender soap for cleaning mm -hmm. your beauty blenders. I use it for cleaning this or other oh, things like, like I use it for cleaning my stamp chamois okay. and then my stamp chamois just smells like lavender and it's, it's, um, You'll have to, I'll send you a link, Jen. You can put it in your description because it's, you can get it on Amazon, but it's, it's the beauty blender lavender soap and it, I love it. And I, I've been cleaning everything with it. So anything that has to do with makeup, I know nothing about. <laughs> oh yeah. I, well, in fact, uh, I said, I said, I need some new lipstick and I texted you, what do you like right now? And you sent me links. So I just bought I it. That's what I do. I, 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 I only do the makeup thing for if I'm like mostly doing video stuff and it doesn't, here's the thing. I have so much makeup on right now. It doesn't even look like it. You just like cake it on and cake it on. And I try not to look like a vampire, but I still look like a, well, yeah. actually maybe I'm a little flushed right now. So. <laughs> that, Hey, every once in a while a hot flash will come through and give us, give us a little oh, color. A little and color. All be good. It's all good. All good. <laughs> That's the way it goes. <laughs> Um, it somebody goes. real quick. Somebody said, um, Simon says stamp. The owner of Simon says stamp is named Heidi. Simon was her dog and that's where the name came from. So there, yes. there isn't a person named Simon who owns Simon says stamp. And, and Simon Hurley is a different person. I saw someone yes. leave that comment. I, and yeah, I saw no. Simon in the chat earlier. Simon Hurley is a different person. He's a right. human. He's <laughs> not a dog. He's a talented young yes. card maker. <laughs> who has his own line of products and yes. yeah, I, I, I just, oh my gosh, I'm seeing a lot of people all of a sudden like Jeff Lindbergh and Ricky are here. Um, oh, hello friends. Yeah. Jeff? Hey guys. Aren't people at work? Hey, hashtag oh, don't tell me craft too. I love yes. the dudes who craft. It brings a lot to our, our world. Um, yes. So yeah. Look, now we could just sit and look at the, uh, the comments. comments. Oh, Valerie, I actually did a terrible job cutting my grip mat. I used scissors, not my spellbinders ones. I should have I should have done it a little more carefully, but yeah. I literally just cut the end off gotcha. and used scissors and it was crooked. And Did that yeah. work for you, having the little strip? Did it help? 
Well, Did you like it? Okay, so the strip, I don't know where I put it. And because it's clear, now it's gone missing. Um, I thought it was a really good idea, and it, it I don't know. I'll have to report back. But, I, but in theory, it was a good idea, because I would be able to just, like, stick little die cuts down and add glue and right i don't know you'll i'll let you know yeah you know, it, it might turn out to be the best thing ever and i'll well, you'll start have to let me know trend. i will let you know I'll, I'll text you first thing tomorrow morning right after i ask you how did we get to be this awesome then i'll be like hey <laughs> this doesn't work that well <laughs> don't cut your grip mats okay just don't do it 50 percent of what i do in here doesn't work out well so i Oh, uh, uh, Jennifer, I, I think it's safe to say Irene Smith has a, has a comment. She said, I love the new knock it off series, which I just debuted yes. yesterday. Um, would it be great if Jennifer and I trade off soon? Can I tell them that you're my next guest? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just have to Je put my card in the mail, which well, means going, I have getting somebody to go to the post office. Cause I, don't I know. Go. I addressed clear. a card to Jennifer. I'm going to put it in the mail and it might not be, um, we got to wait till her arm is settling down. Cause I told Jennifer, Hey, listen, there's no, you know, we're going to be good, but Jennifer will be my next guest on knock it off. And we've got other people in the pipeline, just so you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be super fun. So yeah, I, I post office is a, is a scary, scary place. So oh. <laughs> I have to talk somebody into going, uh, I somebody I asked agree. what, um, what um, ultra, here are ultra clean is that's a stamp cleaner and I yeah. put in the comments a link a list of all these things so if you wanted to read more about them but there's a lot of great stamp cleaners out there I mean okay. Brutus has it I think Gina has it there's a lot of great options out there and they're the right product to clean your stamps yep it's great um, I also just saw a comment about what do you think about all these virtual summits and online classes I assume I'm I'm almost overwhelmed by them all I will, I will tell you this, I've taught at online classes um, since Scrapbook and Cards Today basically launched their first version of it. Um, you don't have to go to all of them. <laughs> you don't have to. No. I will tell you this though, I feel that online classes have made it more um, attainable for everyone to take a class because what I know is not everyone, and I'm one of these people, um, I don't want to travel. I don't want to stay in a hotel. I don't want to spend that money. And I know that back in the day, like if you went to a, a an event, like a creating keepsakes university where Jen and yeah. I used to teach, it's a lot of money um, yeah, the for travel. the hotel and for the food and the travel. And that's one thing that I like, but I think there are so many great choices right now. There are so mm -hmm. many events from Alta New to Pink Fresh to the various summits. It's like, yeah pick and choose what appeals yeah. to you. You know, you don't have to do all of them, but I just, I'm grateful for them because I know as a teacher, I will never teach in person again. And I can say that pretty confidently um, yeah. because I know what works for me as an introvert who doesn't want the travel and doesn't, you know, I'm a fan, but you yeah. don't have to do them all. There's a lot, I, there's a lot. I now. like that the each, I like the events. I think they're a great way to build community. I've made friends like from comments, like just get to know people and then you start chatting offline. I really like them. Um, I also like that more companies are doing them because each one has something different to offer. And I've Definitely. taught in a lot of different ones and there are, they are different. Um, and I love having that variety. Um, yep. so I think the best thing to do is just look at like all the promotions that the company does and see if it's something that you think might work for you. And there's a huge price range, you know, oh, yeah. but keep in mind those that cost more, you get more product. So you're getting a sure. lot of product. Well, it's a, and it's a great value for how much you get too. So yep. the price tag can be scary, but you're getting a lot. However, there are some that are super um, inexpensive, like hero arts. Right. There's is yeah. like, $40 or less and it's a full day with lots of classes and I like that they offer um, you can just take the class for the small amount or you can sign up for the class and buy the bundle of products if you want to make exactly what the teachers are doing or yeah. you can learn the techniques and use what you have and a lot of people do they have yeah. a Facebook group and they'll share cards made 
from that event with other companies' products, and I just think that's neat. So there are some affordable options out there. Online card classes, all of ours have always been use, here are techniques, use what you have. We haven't really done live yet, because Christina's waiting on me, but we have <laughs> loads of cl classes, even the old ones could still be relevant, the techniques. You just yeah. use whatever products you have. So I feel like there's a lot of great options. I know it can be overwhelming, um, but it's a lot of work for these companies to put on. And, you know, just look around, look at the peaks and stuff and see what might, you know, work well for your style, for what you like yeah. to learn. I don't know. Yeah. I think the thing that is fun about it is there is something for everyone. I mean, you know, like if you take an all to new class and you love all to new style, you know, you're going to get to play yeah. with stuff that is your vibe. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, what's kind of cool. Concord and Knife, they do these uh, camp events and it's like, they're going to be such funky, cool, interactive dot. Like you're going to get what something that speaks to you. You you'll be able to find it events like the crop and create. That's a huge event. Oh, um, yes. there's so you get all the styles in one. It costs a little more, but like Jen said, those bigger events, you get so much stuff. Or the that Hero box Arts is one, huge. Which, it's huge. Um, yeah. Well, I have never gotten one, but I've seen, I teach there, so they don't have to send me one, um, <laughs> which is funny. But Well, I get the box, and I have to, for the Scrapbook and Cards Today event, that I get this box of all this product from all the company that's included that all the students get. And my job for the event is to use it all together creatively. So I lay it all out on my ping pong table <laughs> and I try to see how to mix these. It's fun to like be limited. It's also challenging because some of the themes are all over the place. So, you know, it, you, but really there, there are different price ranges and types yeah. for everyone in like Concord and Ninth. If you want to have some fun, you're going to have some fun there. You know, yeah. like there's yeah. a lot of silliness, a lot of fun with that too. So really you got to think about what might work for you and give it a try. I mean, I, I think they're all well done. That That's yeah. at least the ones that I've been um, a part of. I, I feel like they've all been something that, um, um, you know, I would recommend to anyone. But you really, again, you got to find what jams for you. So I am right. going to add to that list the Hero Arts event because Kathy's actually oh, yeah, teaching yeah. in that too. And yeah, there's one coming are. up in a couple weekends, beginning yeah, of November. November. November 4th yeah. and 5th. And it's going to be fun. And there's a lot of people teaching. And and I love it because it's we're not trying to pack a ton of cards into one hour. I get to teach one card and I'm super excited about that. Yeah. And I love it. So it's going to be fun. But yeah. yeah. I, and and yeah, I, I, I texted you. I'm like, you need to do one of these Hero Arts events because it's really fun and I think you'll like the jam. Christopher's here. We were talking about you earlier, Christopher. Oh, You're going to have to go back and watch. Yeah, I'll show him real quick. Christopher, I was just talking about my favorite products of this year so far. And this is definitely in there along with your new one, but I don't know what it's called. Hint, hint, you got to send one to me because I, <laughs> I need, I need the more shiny things. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I just got all of Christopher's um, cardstock. He's got some beautiful cardstock colors. Oh, yes, he does. Yeah, he does. Yes, yeah. he does. Fantastic. Um, well, geez, Jennifer, what I we've know done. I know it's been an hour good. and a half. Well, I, I saw someone say Kathy's an in Kathy just said she was an introvert. Here's the thing. Jennifer and I are both extremely introverted people. You wouldn't know it because we're really good actors. But after this, both of us are going <laughs> to curl up in a fetal ball and just gently whimper to ourselves. And that's okay. It's worth it. But we won't share that part. Um, yeah, we just well, come off as very social, but I, I yeah, if, I don't leave this room. I just want to be we, here. And we text each other all the time. And it's funny, I'll say, oh, I want to tell you a story. I'm gonna FaceTime you. And I never do. She never does. Because she just records a video of it. Yes. And then sends it to me. And then you record your part of it and send it back. And we send each other these videos of each other, of ourselves talking because we're too, it's too much to talk it's on the much. phone. It's, it's too so much of a silly. commitment of an interpersonal <laughs> thing. But you know what though? That's the beautiful thing. I think there's a lot of people in card making people and who are crafters who really are kind of, yep. you know, like to stay in and be, are a little more introverted and, that's all good. It takes all kinds of people to make the world 
Well, and I that's why these gr virtual events are good too. It, that's why the yes. virtual events are good too. Because a lot of us well, who don't like coming out of our shell can. Yeah. Um, that's why I stopped teaching at in-person events because after I was done, I wanted to run behind the stage or wherever we were and just go back to my hotel room. But instead, I had to go out into the lobby and talk to people for another hour. And afterwards, I thought I it was just it it's was hard. just I knew I knew when I was in my 40s, like I can't do this. Yeah, but I can be online because, you know, it's just easier for me. And then I can really connect with people in a different way. So and you do it very well. Why, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. You're a pro. <laughs> I am a professional. Professional I, chicken. I'm a chicken. Okay, if that's your takeaway for today, Jen's going to update links for you. Will you, hold on, um, will you send me a video of you clucking? Because I need to hear it. It's, it's, a, it's more of a oh, sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But I do cluck. I cluck as well. I go... If I'm, and that's annoying, and oh, that is an yeah. old thing that goes way back to the des graphic designers I used to work with at my best design job that I ever had, which was at the Science Museum of Minnesota. And we would be looking at little comps and mock-ups and things of, of brochures, and we would, they would cluck a lot. And so I started clucking a lot, and it was just a habit I had to break. Yeah. Well, clucky, clucky. it wouldn't bother any of us. We, you know, well, there you go. We all have Kathy, our quirks. The, I'm a ch Kathy the chicken. Oh, you know what? And I think was it? Oh, might have been Barb. Barb, was it you, Barb Wong, who called me Crafty Zilski? Someone said that to me in an email, and I'm like, why doesn't anybody call me Crafty Zilski? It's perfect. Okay. Well, I'm, my, I got it. My name's Kathy. But I, I got a I, the chicken things here now. We can't ignore the elephant, the chicken in the room. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. You called oh. me goat. My brother went out and bought me a goat and put it um it, the the day you called me goat he went out and bought that and set it up there so there's jennifer's goat and for those of you who see people call her the goat it is not a <laughs> slam it is a term of endearment it stands for greatest of all time and when you've been doing what she's been doing for as long as she's been doing i think it's a fair it's fair tom brady in football jennifer mcguire in card making <sighs> All Gina's good. the godmother of crafting, so we got well, her. Everybody's going to have their own title. We just happen to be animals now. <sighs> yeah, there you go. Okay, well, we should probably wrap this up, and uh, we'll we hopefully Kathy will come back, and we can do this oh, again, did. and maybe we can make something, and we can craft together. Cause that would be fun too, Jennifer. We can chat and craft. You can. You can talk to me and craft. That's you know, different I kind of liked what we did with Christina last week on her channel, where was you fun. guys did all the work and I just talked. That is, you know what? It was really fun. It was so fun. I mean, yeah, I, I loved it. I can't do a whole, like, I, I was doing good and now I've had to step back. So with the shoulder, I... Die cutting is the best for me because I can use my electric machine and then I can easily just glue things together. But ink blending... Stamping with the Misty, that's still a challenge. So yeah, I could just sit there and cheer you on. I, I, I love it. And there's nothing we need more in our life than having someone cheer us on. And that is a good takeaway. So today, friends of crafty people, go cheer someone on. Yes. Give them some positive words. And yes. uh, listen to me and share handmade kindness. There TM. we go. <laughs> and thank you, Kathy, because you've been so kind to constantly offer Finally, here hey, we are. I'm gonna keep pushing. Oh, I'm gonna bug the crap out of you till the well, end. Well, it's day, payback so. because I bugged you into coming into card making, so it's only fair, right? Yep, I'm gonna turn you into a massive live streamer. It's gonna be great. Okay. On okay. that note. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I will update in my YouTube description what we talked about, but honestly. I think I might have to go crash like Kathy mentioned, and then I'll come back and do it. Um, and thank you, Kathy. I, I love you tremendously. And I'll text I you in a few you. minutes. I'll and thanks all for will. being here. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Have a great bye -bye. day. Bye.